In this course, you will learn about headless browser testing. You will learn about various headless browsers such as PhantomJS, HTML Unit Driver, and Headless Chrome. So, what is headless browser? Let's talk about headless browser. So, headless browser is a web brow web browser that is not configured with a graphical user interface. That means it will not have a graphical interface and it will run in a backend so you will not see a GUI graphical user interface but it will run in a backend let's now talk about the features of headless browsers so very first feature is it is a lightweight it's platform independent it has a fastest execution it supports JavaScript support for HTTPS, HTTP protocols, support for HTML responses such as clicking links, submitting forms, right? Supports for cookies, proxy server support. So what will you learn in this course? So you will learn about headless browsers and its integration and you will have a working code where I'll be giving you uh, examples of Java code which creates headless browsers and runs the test on headless browser let's have a uh, look at the example so headless chrome so let's now talk about normal chrome execution so how normal chrome execution happens so if you see if you run your test it simply launch a chrome browser you will see a gui where uh, you enter the things and yeah the test gets completed so if you see it took 5.2 seconds and it had launched a um, chrome browser so we have seen uh, in normal chrome execution it launches a chrome gui where you can see the chrome has launched and a test gets executed so you will see a graphical user interface now let's have a look at a headless um, browser execution so we are using chrome as a headless so if you see just have a look at this if you run this code and if you notice it won't launch any chrome at the bottom if you see it's not showing any chrome browser right uh, a gui graphical user interface because that uh, did not happen meaning in headless one it doesn't uh, show you the uh, graphical user interface instead it runs in a backend so if you see that execution time is also a bit less 4.8 second only it took before it was uh, 5 second or something so this is the uh, beauty of headless browser so we will learn about uh, all these uh, headless browsers implementation so you i'll be uh, you know take uh, writing a code for headless browsers you'll see headless chrome headless html unit driver headless phantom js so you will learn about everything uh, and even the depend required dependencies also uh, we will learn about what are the dependencies are required uh, and um, uh, what are the uh, common uh, you know issues do you face when you run uh, headless browsers so uh, yeah so uh, you you now you must be having an idea how headless browser is going to be working in this course you will learn about phantom js headless browser so what are the things you will learn you will learn about the screenshot capabilities yes phantom js provides you the screenshot capabilities it doesn't show you the graphical user interface but yes you can take the screenshot so we will cover in this course how to take the screenshot on uh, phantom js uh, browser execution the second thing we'll learn about javascript executor yes it supports javascript so that you can use the javascript executor as well so you can uh, click on the element using javascript executor or you can get a text and many more things you can do with the javascript executor so we'll learn about javascript executor as well and uh, now coming to cookies uh, we will learn how to add the cookie to the session and how to remove a cookie uh, so all this will be covered in this session now coming to the next browser 
that is HTML unit driver. This is a integrated uh, browser with a Selenium. You will get this as a by default, but few dependencies you will have to add, which I'll be covering in this course. Also, you, uh, you will learn that uh, this uh, HTML unit driver is a platform independent. What does it mean is that you don't even need any binary or execution file uh, and uh, if you return a, a test, it will run on any platform without setting any, uh, you know, external file path or something. So uh, it's very powerful. Uh, so it has not required, no binary required. Also, in this course, you will get a free working GitHub project uh, link where I'll be uh, sharing, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the implementation code of this headless browsers with you so uh, please enroll for this course you will come to know about many features of this headless browser testing and you will be very happy thank you so let's now start the setup process i'll just search for the eclipse so now eclipse is starting so you have to choose the workspace so for me i have created one workspace which is headless browser and i'll click on launch in this one we'll learn about uh, how to create a maven project uh, so that we can write our scripts there so you have to simply go to file and new maven project or if you are, if you are not using make then you can simply go over I'll just close this one we'll just go through this later so just go to new project and uh, search for maven maven, maven project next and mm, you have to choose like use a default workspace and uh, then next and in this one you have to choose org.apache.maven.rk it types maven archetype uh, quick start so just quick start next and then you give your project name let's say com dot you can say headless what this will do is that it will create one package in this package you can write your test classes and it will uh, create a, a project with the name of headless once the project uh, has been created you will see uh, uh, such hierarchy where source main java one uh, directory would be there source test java will be another directory uh, so these two important directories are there then jre uh, system library path would be there, uh, there. in this library uh, jdk related information would be there and uh, the maven dependencies uh, will be there in this what are the dependency will be adding will be uh, populated here junit uh, 4 is also there so and also it will create one pom.xml uh, what is pom.xml this pom.xml is very important when it comes to maven because here only we add up the dependencies so when it newly creates a project it doesn't add any you know dependencies so we'll have to add it manually for the, uh, so we'll cover uh, those dependencies related uh, thing in a next session but uh, in this session we have learned how to create a maven project and uh, what are the things are there so if you see in source main java there is one package created source test java also one package has been created and um, pom.xml so this project hierarchy you will get you need not to create this source main java source test java manually it will create automatically so in this session we will learn about adding of uh, dependencies for your project so since um, you are aware that uh, we are going to use three major headless browsers one is phantom js another is, another is html unit driver and third one is chrome driver right and we will be using along with the selenium so we will be required four dependencies majorly one is uh, selenium one is for chrome and one for unit uh, HTML unit driver and uh, one for phantom.js so let's go 
to the pom.xml let's try to understand pom.xml so if you look at this co uh, code it looks like an xml file right yeah it's an xml only so pom.xml also with the name also you can understand it's an xml right so if you see the group id is com artifact id is headless and the version is 0, 0.0. .0. You need not to worry. Uh, the time we had created a project, we had given this. And later I had renamed this project to Headless Browser Test Framework. Okay, so the time we create uh, uh, the project, uh, this gets uh, this, this has, I mean, this, uh, this you have to pass it as a mandatory and this will populate it here. Now, if you see uh, this build section, you can ignore so this is optional so if you see build plugin what is this for it is for packaging so when you build your project it will generate one jar file if you don't want this you can remove this line of code okay now coming to uh, the dependency section which is very important so in the dependency section we have junit in the junit uh, uh, group id is junit artifact is junit version is 4.12 and scope is test so what is a scope scope is uh, you know so the maven has a actually if you uh, you know if you go to maven and just say run as a maven build clean so these are the maven scopes are there so when you build when you clean or when you run a, as a test so this comes under your scope so uh, when this dependent dependency should be included so the scope we have mentioned is a test so when you, you when you run this command like run as a maven test this should be included in your project so this is optional you can remove this as well as a scope it, it won't affect anything for you now coming to uh, so why i'm using junit because the tests i have written in a junit i'm not using test ng i don't want to make it complicated so to make the thing simple i just use junit uh, you need not to learn about this it just a notation will be using it uh, to execute the test nothing else uh, if you don't if you're not aware about the JUnit, you not to worry i'll cover in the next session now uh, as i mentioned you will be required selenium uh, java dependencies so uh, you can uh, include it as a like uh, like uh, the uh, group id will be org dot selenium hq dot selenium and artifact id is selenium java and the version now you must be wondering how i can uh, get it if there is a new latest version comes so you just simply search for this group id uh, over a you go to browser and search and if you just tape it over here it it has a url maven repository right and there is a link also selenium java if i tape it here then uh, you will see there are so many versions are here you can see here 4.0.x uh, 3.141.x uh, in our project if you see 3.41.51 I have I've been using I can even upgrade it but for time being you can use this because uh, it also dip, um, okay it also makes sense because uh, uh, see if I if I use a latest version here then I have to change for uh, other selenium dependencies as well if you see here also for the chrome also so i don't want to do that but yeah if you want to upgrade it you can do it now uh, how can include so you just click over here and uh, you can see uh, the maven if you see here maven gradle and all so if you are building gradle project you copy this if you are using maven you simply copy this dependency thing and paste it as a complete bunch of code so let's say like this right i'll just uh, make it uh, you know i'll just beautify this uh, so we will be required selenium java this dependency now we'll require one more dependency for headless uh, chrome driver right so we need selenium chrome driver okay so uh, how how can you get this you can even search for just this go to here put it in your google just enter it and if you see uh, and you can just say maven so it would be easy so if you go here you'll show it will show you one link here you just tap it over here and just tap it over here and uh, you'll get this section right under maven you can simply copy this uh, till here dependencies to dependency and paste it in your um, sorry 
paste it in your uh, um, pom.xml similar way you have to get the dependency for html driver and uh, you have to get the latest version so i have been using 2.43.0 and the last one is for phantom js uh, there is one more headless browser we have right phantom js for this also you will uh, required one uh, dependency which i have included like this so uh, with this you got a fair no, uh, idea about how we can add the dependencies right so stay tuned in the next session we will talk about the uh, coding part you know initialization of uh, you know mm, this one uh, headless browsers so let's just start uh, so we'll be starting with a headless chrome driver and uh, if you see i have created one class headless uh, chrome driver dot java under source says java here to create the similar one i'll be sharing a github link uh, uh, in the description below so uh, you can find that and you can just simply copy paste the code or if you wanna write it uh, by yourself you can do that so if you see i have uh, created this headless chrome driver class and there is a web driver uh, empty object which is set to null and there is a uh, test test method which is headless chrome browser testing okay and uh, if you see it's uh, empty and there is another method which is take a screenshot we'll learn about this later so let's begin so in order to you know uh, start the chrome driver uh, you know chrome browser uh, selenium needs a uh, uh, you know binary a binary file so open google uh, search engine search for uh, you know selenium chrome you can say selenium chrome binary and if you search uh, you will be shown one chrome driver dot chromium dot org downloads click over this uh, link and it will open you a um, list of uh, you know chrome versions so let's say chrome driver 86 chrome driver 85 and chrome driver 84 chrome driver 83 so you just check it out here what is the chrome driver version um, of uh, uh, installed in your machine so let's say if your uh, current chrome version in your machine is uh, uh, 86 just tap it over here you just check with the exact uh, you know uh, uh, numbers as well 40 42 40.22 right so you have to match it with this as well let's say if it is not available here may so sometimes what happens when you have latest version of chrome the binary may not be available that in that case you might uh, uh, try this uh, the the one which is available or if it doesn't work then you have to downgrade your chrome version so let's say if i have the same chrome version in my machine so just tap it over here it will give me just three options one is you know uh, chrome driver linux 64.zip chrome driver mac 64.zip chrome driver windows 32.zip uh, so let's say if your machine is linux machine you just download this and unzip th this zip file you download and then unzip it uh, if it is your mac uh, operating system like i'm, I'm using mac uh, mac uh, machine so i can download this I'll just tap it over here and it will just start downloading it and if you are windows one uh, if you are using windows operating system just tap it over here and download it so once you download you have to unzip and once you unzip it will be uh, available in your download folder you have to what you have to do it do is that you just copy that and create one folder under this like like this you can create a right, uh, new and folder and give any name i am just creating with a folder as a libs okay My currently libs is already exists so it won't allow me but yeah you can create it in the libs folder that unzip file uh, that chrome driver just you copy and paste it here uh, once this step is done then you are now uh, ready for the uh, headless chrome driver uh, you know setup process uh, so this is what uh, you have to do in order to get the binary of a chrome so let's now write the code to uh, you know initialize the headless browser 
so before initializing the headless browser i'll take you to the old way and then we'll compare with the uh, headless one so the web driver uh, uh, driver of has a null uh, we have said so now i just do this so if i just say driver equals to new chrome chrome driver so if i just do this line of code do you think will it uh, this will work it won't work why i'll tell you the reason so if i just run as a j unit so you can see here it is saying illegal state exception the part to the driver executable must be set by a, a web driver chrome web driver dot chrome dot driver uh, system property okay so it is clearly saying us what has to be done so it ne we need to set web driver dot chrome dot driver uh, as a system property so that uh, mm, it can read so what we have to set so uh, in our uh, uh, i mean in pre just few minutes back we have seen like chrome drive uh, chrome driver uh, binary uh, which we had downloaded and kept in lips folder we have to provide this to the selenium so how we can do that is uh, just a simple one you have to just write this way you we'll just say system system dot uh, you can say set property and you have to give the key so what is a key it is it has mentioned like web driver dot chrome dot driver so let's say let's, let's set it same way web driver dot chrome dot yeah, it says uh, driver right so web driver dot chrome dot driver okay so what we have to set we have to set the path so of uh, this right so i just mentioned system properties it should be not be a properties we are setting single property right so we have to set key and value so just one so it is aligning so now i have to pass a path of this so right click over here and just say to property and uh, just you have to pa uh, copy this location and cancel and just give it to chrome so one uh, now i now when i run this test it should launch the chrome driver so let's try this run run as a uh, test j unit test if you see it has launched the chrome driver right you can say chrome is being controlled by automated test software right so now this code is working there could be one problem you can see in the make operating system and which is when you uh, copy paste this this permission executable permission may not be there so you have to check this one and apply and close okay so now you are set so it is launching uh, 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 launching the chrome driver uh, chrome browser for us uh, so this is clear right in our previous video we have seen that uh, we had launched uh, chrome browser but it was not a headless so now let's make this code as a headless so if you let me just try uh, run it again if i run this line of code what will happen is that it will launch a chrome browser you can see a graphic user interface gui right now since uh, now we have to convert this into so i'll just adding a quit method so that it should quit the browser okay so also we should do one more thing is driver dot gate and let's say we can say http a and then say www dot google dot com or let's say facebook dot com and if i run this it should okay so it will quit so before this we can say thread dot sleep which is not a good way but i am just for the example purpose i am putting this to so let's put it for 15 seconds if i just run this code it should open a facebook.com so it has launched the browser it has opened facebook.com and after a few seconds the browser should get closed so it's just waiting to get over those 15 seconds and this test will get completed yeah 
so it's got completed now what uh, we are going to try is that now it should not launch the graphical user interface it should run in a headless mode so how to make this so you must be aware about the chrome capabilities if you are not then let me just write so we can pass the uh, capabilities to chrome using chrome options right so I'll just say options equals to new chrome options chrome options so in options we can say it uh, or add argument so we can say add argument so we have add arguments uh, option is there and the, this one we have to choose and in this we can pass as a string and that's it and once we have this option we just uh, we can pass this to the pass this to our constructor of chrome driver so chrome driver we had created a without uh, capabilities without chrome options here we are trying to create with the options but what this argument should be so just this one line of code will make this uh, you know uh, driver is a headless so i'll have to just say hyphen hyphen headless if you just pass this and if you notice if i run this test you won't see any browser you know getting launched so if you see here uh, you know um, nothing is happening right so now what is the best way to uh, validate whether it has launched the browser has launched and whether it is executing so what we can do is that you know uh, let's let me just open a chrome browser let me open a facebook uh, dot com let's say if i open this let's validate this uh, one of the you know header or something so let's see which has id we'll use that one so if i just uh, see this doesn't have id this login button has id so it has a name and data test id okay so this has a name and if you just see create account has any id so yeah create a create account has a id this is u2 something like that so we just verify uh, let's say we just uh, assert it so we say assert uh, equal sorry assert equals and we can say driver dot find element by id we can pass this id and then we can say dot get text okay we, what are we going to assert is that we should assert with the it should be having a text of create new account right so we'll verify with this let's now run and see whether this validation is getting passed or no uh, there could be a possibility that this id uh, facebook may be generating uh, dynamically but let's see well, let's wait and watch what happens so I think this 15 seconds time would be more we should change it to 5 seconds or we can even remove this code because we don't need right so if you see our uh, you know test has passed yeah so another way to verify is that I can I should print it right so let's print this so I just say system system dot out dot print ln and I can say create new account button text from ui is and we can simply call this right so it should print us it should print the text right so that we will come to know and we can one we can add one more thing here like once it comes here we can say this started and once it comes here before create we can or after create we can say test completed so when i just simply run it again run this is j unit you will see that it has started running and uh, you won't see any browser coming on this screen right so it is running in background in headless mode so it is not launching 
G graphical user interface for you the test has passed if you see right now let's see the logger so we have the test started okay now we have create new account button ui text so we are getting this text here if you see we are printing and then we are verifying right with assertion so let's make this test fail let's say uh, in the ui we we are getting a text like this right create new account so let's say if we are just say create old account okay so it should fail right it should not be like this suggestion is always passing so let me run and it should fail at this line number 38 just to make sure whether it is working or not so if you see here comparison failure expected create new account and was create old account so one more thing we have to make sure the expected comes so this is our expected and this is our actual right so we should pass it this way so that the logger will be clear right here it is coming at a wrong right so just let me run it again and if you see the test execution is very fast because with the 15 second thing we are not using here uh, with the wait time we have removed so our test got complicated completed within 2.7 second and if you see here the comparison failure expected was create old account this was our expected but on the ui it got create new account so this means our uh, code is working so this is what we had uh, to do to make our chrome drives driver is a headless our chrome browser to run in headless mode you have to add a chrome uh, options in the chrome option argument you can pass is a hyphen hyphen headless and you are good to go so it won't launch a you know chrome browser explicitly but it will uh, launch a chrome browser in a background you won't see any chrome driver on your desktop so this uh, headless browser is very useful when you are trying to run your tests on ci uh, pipeline uh, so meaning jenkins pipeline so there it is very helpful there you need not to install the chrome, actual chrome in your machine you just need this binary so this line of code if you check in and run on jenkins it will run like any like normal code you need not to install your chrome browser in that machine and that stuff you need not to worry so that's it in this one we are in the next session we'll talk about html unit driver and then we'll talk about phantom js driver So let us start with the uh, headless phantom js so as you must be aware or you may not be aware about uh, phantom js so phantom js is a, a, a pure headless browser which doesn't have any gui graphical user interface so in this uh, uh, session will be you know creating an object of a uh, headless uh, uh, phantom js and uh, will validate few elements so in our previous video if you just go through we had uh, launched a chrome uh, headless browser where we had uh, you know uh, set a property meaning chrome option is a headless and then we had open facebook.com and we asserted that create uh, meaning it should i mean we had failed this one uh, so it was like create new account we were validating that this text is coming so let's run this program and see if it is still working because if there is no change in test id then definitely it should work so if you notice there is no chrome gui you can see over here but yet the test got completed and uh, the test status is passed the same thing we are going to validate in this as well okay uh, but in uh, uh, in this section there will be a difference is that we are talking about phantom js which is completely headless so uh, let's write the code now so we'll have to first create an object of desired capabilities so let's do that so desired capabilities we can say caps equals to new we can say desired capabilities you need not to pass anything in the constructor of desired capabilities now once we have desired capabilities we can we, oh, we have to uh, you know uh, do uh, just one thing is that uh, you know 
in order to run the phantom js it is not required that it should be installed in your computer you cannot install uh, phantom js in your computer like a chrome browser so in the, uh, for the chrome we have two options right headless and without headless but the chrome is required in that case uh, but in this case of phantom js you don't need a chrome browser uh, i mean sorry you don't need a phantom js to be installed in your computer or laptop what you have to do is uh, you have to just uh, get the binary of a phantom js okay so that's it so you can just say chrome and if i just simply go over here and search for phantom js download phantom js and if it is windows download from here if it is a mac download this zip file and linux and so so this link i'll put in a uh this one um, description so you can download it directly so once this zip you have downloaded you just unzip it and put it in a one of the folder of our project which is the leaf folder which is located outside of the uh, source test main resource so in this one yeah, i kept phantom js so you just copy paste that unzip file one here now we have to uh, let our uh, selenium script that know that uh, where we have kept this so we have to set the properties so in order to set the properties we can say uh, sorry so we can just say caps dot set uh, capability we can give a key key can for this one we will have to, we can use phantom this driver service which has some constants so I can say phantom phantom js driver service dot our key will be phantom js executable path so phantom js executable path and in this we have to set a path okay so w what would be the path for this so if you see uh, and if I just right click over in this file and just try to see the location so it it, it should be this path so you can just simply copy and paste it here yeah that's it so this is one way so if you wanna set hard coded path you can just copy paste the path of your js but i want to make it dynamically so i want the path of at least this project where this project is located to so if you look at this the path before i copy paste it the path was uh, users anil patidar headless browser in that my project you can see right headless browser test framework so i need till here the path i so we can use this path dot gate to get uh, to absolute path dot to string this string uh, this much will give the path till this project till here okay so what we have to do is we, we can just simply add the uh, this remaining path this much so how we can do is you can say path plus we can uh, give as a string here like this okay so this is much this this is it so now what we can do is we, i'll just copy paste this code where uh, you know uh, so here we were creating an uh, object of uh, a driver of chrome instead of chrome uh, what we can say driver equals to chrome driver instead we can give driver equals to find term js driver and in this we can pass this capabilities so i can just pass caps and now let's try to do the same actions let's open facebook.com you know and then we are just finding an element printing that uh, text and now we are asserting that create new facebook account page is open and one this is the assertion should get passed i'll just copy paste this code in this as well so we're doing just we're just opening facebook.com and uh, printing a text of a button which is create new account we are validating the text of this button and then quitting and test complete so if i run this code it should get passed if it get failed meaning there is a problem if i run this code it should get passed if it get failed meaning there is a problem so if i run you have to notice that there will be no graphical user interface will be launched because that the phantom js will get ex will get executed in the background so let's see the console logs so it has initiated phantom js driver service and if you see the text bot okay uh, so here if you see uh, 
it got failed the comparison comparison has been failed so the create new account text is not coming at all now we have to debug right what might have went wrong right so let's make use of this let's take the screenshot uh, before uh, assertion what is happening so let's give this assertion name as a uh, let's say facebook underscore home page so we'll talk about this take screenshot method which i have already written here uh, so let's talk a bit about say this take screenshot you have to just uh, create an object of take screenshot and pass the driver object and it needs a file uh, object so it just a uh, type of what type of output it is it would be file and the path so the path would be the project path and in this the the section screens i'll just remove this ip uh, files so just a second so there'll be no we'll not have any problem here and then if you just go back okay if you go back so screens and check name which we are giving we are giving facebook home page so there will be one screenshot will be taken here and saved and the current millisecond so so to make it unique so if you just give us check name as a facebook login uh, the again and again that image will be get replaced but i want to give a uh, current time so current millisecond i given and the uh, the extension of that file will be .png and what i am trying to do is file util dot copy file uh, from this destination to source folder source folder this file okay so from here to there so source file i am whatever the screenshot will be taken will be uh, saved here in this uh, screenshot folder so let's run and see what went wrong is this our uh, facebook page open or no why this validation got failed so let's see now what's happening so it's running and test got failed let's refresh the project and if you see there is one screenshot taken log so it's coming in hindi language so that could be the reason of a failure and uh, that's the reason it got failed and there is a possibility that uh, okay uh, yeah that's the reason so let's see where, why this two screen where this two screenshot got uh, has been taken fb login page okay let's see are we using somewhere the same method are we calling somewhere no so why this uh, two screenshot got uh, has been taken then is this one which were not deleted or something like that let's see just refresh it let's delete this as well and run it again and see because there could be a chance that last time when i had deleted those images were already present so it says uh, what is happen notice found just a second so if you just say run is a j minute okay it has started now so the test has started and this time also the test got failed let me refresh this and you can see single because last time it had uh, retained the so uh, you have learned in this uh, phantom js th uh, thing that uh, we can take the screenshot as well so just if you have any doubt just uh, reach out to me this is very simple code you can just copy paste and it, there is nothing to understand here so it just three uh, majorly uh, you know one line of code just copying of and paste so this line of code what it will do it will take a, a screenshot and keep it here take a screenshot driver take a screenshot and once we get it uh, we have to just you know transfer it to this destination directory so this is the call which is uh, taking a screenshot now this code we have already seen we have just created desired capabilities and we are just passing the path of phantom js uh, in this case you don't need to install phantom js you have to keep a binary in your project or anywhere you can have, you have to pass that path and you can create a driver equals to new phantom js driver dot gate will open facebook dot com system dot out dot print ln uh, we'll print the driver dot so we we are just printing driver dot get final element and for this id we are printing the text 
here we are taking a screenshot and here we are putting an assertion which is failing for us which is valid because the pay look and feel we were expecting is a different than our previous video so stay tuned uh, in the next session we'll talk about headless html unit driver so let's now begin with a html unit driver so before giving the intro uh, about this uh, let's write the one line of code uh, which creates the object of this so we just need a web driver equals to driver equals to new html sorry new html unit driver okay so this will create the instance instance of uh, html driver unit driver now we have already explored uh, phantom js and uh, one more is that or chrome so what is the difference here let's talk about the difference and advantages and disadvantages so html unit driver basically is a headless only but the very uh, you know uh, strong reason to use this is it doesn't need any uh, you know binary file which we had used for chrome and phantom js so if you just go back to phantom js code you have to pass phantom js executable path uh, property in the chrome also you had to pass chrome driver uh, you know um, uh, that executable path but if you see here in html unit driver you, you don't need to pass the uh, um, you know executable um, uh, file path because it doesn't need so it's a platform independent so you if you run a code uh, if you write a code here it will work everywhere so uh, meaning it will work on all the platforms let's say linux unix without any change in the code because you don't need to pass those uh, binary files that's the first advantage let's now talk about the disadvantage the very first disadvantage of uh, html unit driver is that you cannot take the screenshots yes you have heard it correctly and if you cannot take the screenshot uh, sometimes it becomes hard to figure out the issue so in our previous example we have seen the look and feel uh, of uh, this website got changed when we ran in a phantom js it was it, it is coming in hindi but when i we had ran in uh, the same test in a chrome uh, the look and feel was different so if you just want to have a look again let me run it again so if i just run and just say facebook uh, login and this time we'll say uh, to distinguish let's say chrome and just if i run this uh, you will notice the screenshot so two different screenshot and it becomes very difficult to figure out whether uh, where is this issue so this test has started and let's wait for let's say a couple of seconds and this test should get completed so let's just wait and hope it gets completed so test got completed test got passed as well if i just refresh this page then you can see facebook login chrome this is screenshot if you look at uh, it's very zoomed one so if i just simply uh, see if you see uh, it is opening a desktop website right and it was working fine but when we ran in a uh, phantom js it had opened a mobile uh, a website of uh, facebook but it was uh, using a different uh, you know language as well and here it was an issue so we could find using the screen uh, with the help of a screenshot but what would happen in the headless uh, html you cannot you don't you don't have that option here so yeah so we will discuss the advantage and disadvantage of html unit driver so let's now jump into the code and see how it works so let me just quickly do one thing let's just copy paste the code from our uh, previous example which is headless phantom js why i'm copy pasting because it's just a repeat steps steps if you see driver.get and uh, we are opening facebook.com here system.println we are printing a, a text and take a screenshot we are not gonna use because if we try to use it won't allow so just let's try that then let me just copy paste this code as well and see if it is working or no so 
yeah it needs lots of things so i need to change a bit in the code as well it needs a driver object i can just set it to null for and when the test runs it needs a path as well the code we can simply use i have already explained what is this code and uh, let's run this so it, it this uh, should take the screenshot but uh, we know right this doesn't allow uh, so apart from this so let's take this later so first run this test and see if it is working or no so it should open the facebook it should validate the button create new account which is this create new account this one this button we are validating so let me run quickly so in this uh, one uh, in order to create an object of uh, HTML in your driver you not to do much you have to just create an object that's it you need not to pass the binary and nothing it's just one line of code and if I just run it and just look at the logs we are just logging like create new account so it is started but you you know you may you might you are noticing like it is printing lots of thing so create new account button takes on from ui is create new account and test got completed and the j unit test if you see it got passed so yeah the test work well there is no issue now let's see let's try to take the screenshot i just uncommented this code and run let's see if it is taking a screenshot or no so the test has started you can notice here and uh, you got this and if you see the error it says HTML in driver cannot be cast to selenium that takes a screenshot so it doesn't allow to take the screenshot so yeah, that that's pretty much in HTML in your driver. Uh, it's a uh, easiest way to you know uh, work uh, on Selenium. So if you are a beginner, you can just don't need to download this binary and based on the Chrome version or Phantom JS version, different versions. Yeah, you just have to mention that uh, unit driver dependencies mm, like this uh, in your pom.xml and you can start using it. So it's just one line of code and you don't have to worry about the path and everything. This, those are being used here. But here just one line of code and that's it. And it works very fast. It works faster than the, you know, uh, Phantom JS and Chrome uh, driver. So that's it in this session. Uh, in the next session, we'll talk about uh, if you, uh, the GitHub project. So in this session, we'll be talking about the GitHub thing. So if you are not aware about the GitHub, so GitHub is the uh, uh, versioning control uh, thing, uh, which maintains the versions of your source code <coughs> along along with it. Uh, it stores the code on the cloud. So everybody uh, from your team or <coughs> of your, uh, you know, uh, group can access this so whatever we have discussed so far i have uh, checked in the code over here in this section here so what you can do is that uh, you can just simply tap it here and download zip and unzip this and you know import this in your project and if you are uh, good at uh, uh, git uh, then you can just use this url http url and you can say git uh, clone and you can clone this so uh, let's talk about this now so uh, just it has this one branch master branch and if you go to source uh, so tap it over source and then we have two folders java.com main java.com and test java.com so let's go to test and this you can see three test methods so one for headless chrome driver so the complete code is there even it has the uh, few advanced features as well uh, which uh, will be uh, covered uh, 
and it has uh, all the code so you can simply uh, copy paste I mean just uh, copy uh, co meaning download this zip and import it in your Eclipse so that's it so the link for this uh, project has been added in the description so you can refer that so that's it thank you